Are we filming? Yes, we are. So, welcome, welcome to another mail time. Uh, I've, I've been in the habit of uh, not filming the unwrapping process uh, because it's it's time consuming. I'm trying to keep these more concise, uh, but I wanted to show you this. I've just removed the the label, and I wanted to uh, just start it because I, I wanted to show you, let me get a pair of scissors rather than my knife. Um, I wanted to show you that, uh, I wanted to share this, <laughs> this uncertainty and there's a moral in the tale because the, uh, this is a file of facts. Uh, this is a file of facts that I bought on eBay. Um, and I haven't bought one for some time, uh, but I just wanted to share this with you because um, as you can, as you can tell, uh, it looks like some bubble wrap. It's not in a box. Um, so these rings here are very, 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 uh, exposed and vulnerable to the postal system. In this particular case, it was Royal Mail, who are pretty good. Uh, but sometimes, uh, it's not so good, especially if, uh, the vendor doesn't uh if, if personally i think uh, a bit of bubble wrap um isn't is just simply not enough so there's a risk there's a risk for me because of the disappointment that i might face after investing a fair amount of time in researching and bidding and looking and and kind of the, the also the excitement and also the sometimes waiting in for the parcel to arrive uh, if the vendor doesn't uh, use a track service uh, there's I mean what do you do you know um, if this is left on my doorstep then uh, then there is a risk that it will be uh, borrowed by someone passing by in the road outside so that it is it's a risky business um, but let's have a look at the parcel and see whether there is any damage. I hope there's not, because this is this this was a fantastic uh, this, this was a fantastic find, and dare I say it, probably uh, one of the best bargains I've ever had. Um, but uh, let's let's have a look. I'm looking forward to this. So here we go. At least there is some bubble wrap. Someone last year sent me a mini-sized Filofax, uh, just open, so they could uh, um, get the uh, large letter um, tariff rather than the small parcel tariff We're in just a plastic envelope. No, not even some bubble wrap. Luckily, it arrived safely, but it's a hell of a risk. So. This is the this is the binder, and I'm going to tell you I'm going to uh, demonstrate why I think this is so special. It really is one of the best filofaxes out there. So, first of all, um, we have the popper. It has a little bit of uh, discoloration and wear, as we know. Uh, seems okay. Seems okay, doesn't it? Um, but you will notice that underneath all the dirt, and this is filthy. I'm going to wash my hands and wash the Filofax afterwards. Um, interestingly, I don't know why. I don't know why people selling stuff online uh, don't clean it before they send it. You know, if they think they're s saving some money or saving some time, fair enough. But the fact that they photograph it dirty means that I get it at a fantastically reduced price. And then I can clean it at my leisure. Doesn't take too long. And then it's worth a lot more in the clean state. So I don't know why my nose is twitching. Can you tell? Um, but what have we got here? So it feels nice. Uh, it feels good quality. It's got 
a really really nice popper and strap where the uh, where the strap is made of two bits of leather sewn together uh, which is which is how I like it the uh, pen loops are they appear to be a standard Folivac size let's let's double check yeah absolutely standard on that one absolutely standard on that one I uh, if it's a really tight fit with a pilot v7 then that's a standard Folivac size surprisingly they're always very very consistent uh, apart from some of the early vintage ones, which uh, are, are significantly less. So I don't know how they manage that, but but fair play to Filofax for doing that. Um, so let's have a look at this, because we're going to have a look at the rings here. Um, those of you in the know will see this as, although it's not written here, it is a vintage Filofax made in England and it is probably it's probably been made between 1993 and 1994 it is a Sherwood and it is uh it is another the reason I know it's a Sherwood is because if you look at this this is my Sherwood that I bought brand new in 1993 uh can I show you the inside of it uh yeah I can do that um so they are they are identical, as you can tell. Um, some of these models actually say Sherwood, but, uh, but the ones that I have, and I have several of these. Why do I have several of these? Because I seek them out and buy them. Why do I buy them? Because they're one of the hidden gems in the timeline of Filofax. Uh, where prior to these sort of softer versions, um, they tended to be quite utilitarian, many of them. Some of them didn't have very, very good uh, flattability, but uh, if you can see with this flattability, it is perfect. And I suspect that it's just the same as the first one I had in 1993. Uh, it's the, the flattability is perfect from day one. Uh, you don't have to train the leather or do jump through hoops or wait potentially 50 years of use before a vintage Filofax or uh, an earlier one, which was fairly stiff, uh, finally, finally became usable from a flattability point of view after many, many decades of use. Who who has the time to do that? So it's a bit of a bit of a not a moan, just an observation. The reason why I like these Sherwoods is because uh, the quality of construction is on a scale of one to ten, where one is very very poor and ten is sensational. This is a nine. I'd give it a nine. Um, the leather seems to last the test of time. It doesn't peel, but then again, um, that the leather peeling issue uh, reared its ugly head uh, later on in, in the uh, early 2000s, maybe 2005, 6, 7, 8. Um, you don't have the issue where, although this is leather covering a, like a, there's a, there's a man-made stiffener under here. Um, you do not have the issue where the, the leather starts flaking and chipping off so you can see the cardboard underneath. I've never had a trouble, never had any problem with, the, with these. I've probably got half a dozen of these Sherwoods now, but very, very nice. A row of, um, uh, a row of, uh, credit card slots. Uh, but this will be a feature of a subsequent hack. Um, I'm busy making uh, a, a video about uh, 10 Filofax hacks. A bit of a plug there. Uh, it won't be ready for uh, maybe two or three weeks, but maybe maybe earlier. Who knows? But one of them is what I do. I have hacked a Sherwood. Um, so, uh, a nice full-length pocket. It's always risky putting your hands in a in a binder you haven't seen before because there might be something sharp in there. 
Uh, outbounds, outbound pen loops rather than facing inwards. The cheaper way to do this is to just sew them facing inwards into the... Let me just zoom in and show you a little bit better. So uh, a, cheaper, a cheaper option uh, from a manufacturing cost point of view is just to sew the, the pen loop into the hem uh, so it effectively... Uh, points inwards and the reason I don't like that is because they interfere with the tabs and the dividers. Um, much better to have to, to seek out these where there is a there's a slot and it's very neatly sewn as you can tell so that the the uh, the, the um, <laughs> pen loop uh, faces uh, outwards so it's out of the way if you're not using it it's completely out of the way. If you use it, then the pen sits here rather than here, and that's much, much better. Notice that these have, if you take uh, a, a snub-nosed pen, this is a Pilot V7, so it's not a pointy one. It is a snub-nosed one, and you can see that I can push it all the way through. Why can I push it all the way through? Because it is a single piece of leather. Uh, so there's no there's no hem inside. Uh, with later versions, there is a hem inside. And so it kind of catches. Uh, you need to have a pointy pen. You also need to have a pointy pen to circumvent the problem, the design problem. Well, it's... It works. I mean, it's it, it works with a pointy pen, but if you have a single piece of leather that isn't turned over and folded, then you have the, you, you, it gives you the option of instead of using a pointy uh, a pointy pen, as it were, uh, you can use a snub nose pen. So it, it is an advantage, in my opinion. Um, okay, so we we come to the rings. This is the important thing. Let me. Let me uh, uh, zoom out again. So, always a risk. In the photographs, these seem to be okay. Let me feel the mechanism. Okay, so this is a reliable mechanism. Very tight, very, uh, very nice. And this is synonymous with this particular model. The rings do seem to be very, very good and strong and precise. I've never had any trouble with these rings. So, there we go. Uh, let's have a look on the other side. Well, we have, a, we have a zip. Let's just make sure the zip works. It does. Uh, very nice. I don't know who makes these. It just says uh, AL... Uh, doesn't look as if it's a YKK zip, but nevertheless, uh, we have a we have a full length pocket there, and we have a full length zipped pocket. Very very useful for stuff. Um, and uh, as I as I mentioned before, the uh, the um, the fastener is is of really really high quality. I'm so glad on these particular ones, on these particular English made Sherwoods, the poppers do seem to uh, stay on. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas, as we know, many 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 vintage Filofaxes, the, the the plastic cap on the popper uh, tends tends to fall off. Um, there are ways and means of resolving that, but it's just a. It's just a. I really like these. I really rate these, amongst other reasons, uh, because the popper tends to stay on, even though you know there's a bit of wear there, as as inevitably there there is. Um, one thing that I want to share with you are the corners. Now, you know that I have. A, I I do not like some of the corners. Um, you're always going to get these corners where there's a man-made substrate underneath. Compared to um, Filofaxes that I really, really, really like that are even older. These are fantastic. This, I believe, is a is a um, Gloucester, uh, but uh, you don't have the turnover. You only have the turnover when there is a 
there is an insert, a stiffener or a man-made insert. This, uh, the, the, the reason for the flattability on these is because of the, the, the design of the stiffener. It isn't a one piece that wraps round the, the whole width of the file effects round the spine, which I presume is done because it's cheaper to do that. But the big problem with that is, in my opinion, being someone that likes flattability, is it means that the, the the binder is basically unusable. And I think, what a shame. What a shame that uh, some binders, at least for me, uh, because I like to not need a... Th I don't want to have a third hand to hold it down so that I can write. I would rather it just... I would rather have it so that it just you can open it with one hand and then you can write uh, rather than holding it down so that it doesn't shut like that with a clamshell. And some of them are like a clamshell, which is ridiculous, in my opinion. So, file facts. Anyone there who's watching this at the moment, if you are... it's, I'm going to go off on one of my... Uh, my silly eulogies, but uh, I will say this. If there's anyone, Filofax, uh, who who has... If Filofax have lost the art of this kind of stru construction for a Filofax, I know, I know that A4s, there's not really a problem because the sheer weight of them. Uh, there's not really a problem with um, uh, many of the A5s, again, because of the weight, but when you get down to personal size, or pocket size, or mini size, um, if you if you have lost, I mean, I mean, there are, back in, uh, um, I'm trying to think of an example, blue, the blue that the Egyptians used, the, the blue dye, the blue powder they used to, to, to decorate things, that recipe is lost forever. But the recipe, the, the, the methods for producing filofaxes that have flattability can easily be rediscovered. If, if you have a whip round and you go on eBay and you buy one of these Sherwoods, for instance, take it to your design centre, open it and strip it down, get a razor blade, do, do the sacrificial thing and have a look... I am not a perfect expert at this, but if you... And I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it on one of these Sherwoods because I want to... I, don't, I, I would feel bad about that. But get a razor blade or a scalpel and cut down one of these Sherwoods and have a look. Have a look at the construction methods and maybe replicate that. I know that that's not possible on the cheaper models, but you've got some expensive models where there's the flattability leaves something to be desired, shall we say. So there must be, there must be some uh, margin in the, in the supply chain. Uh, whatever the factory gate price is for Filofaxes made in the Far East, it's obviously going to be substantially less than the retail price. So if you say to yourselves, well, uh, we will, we will spend an extra dollar on this, on this model and use, you know, you know, go, uh, follow Neil's suggestion. Uh, yes, I can see that he's made a point. Let's strip one of these down and I can see, we can all see that, uh, Neil's right. The construction of this Filofax lends itself to perfect flattability from day one. Guys, what do you think? Do you think Neil's idea is good? Okay, let's have a vote on it. Everybody who uh, thinks that Neil's idea is good, let's go for it. Now, where are the tea and biscuits? So, job well done, I would say. Um, so, perfect flattability fantastic fantastic uh, quality um if you're interested uh, i paid for mine back in 1993 september 1993 i paid 49.99 which is equivalent uh, as i record this in march 2023 just over 100 pound so roughly similar to 
uh, some of the uh, uh, more upmarket file of faxes today. But a fabulous, fabulously made binder. Um, I would say it's probably cheaper to, a lot cheaper to make binders now because they're made in the Far East where wages are very, very low compared to the UK. Uh, so hopefully there might be some uh, hope in the future that flattability is... Uh, um, I know not everybody is interested in flattability, that's fair enough, but there are many, many people out there who like flattability. And the reason I've banged on about this for five minutes is because um, this is how it should be done. Uh, this is how it should be done, in my opinion. So what else have we got here? Let's just, uh, let's just uh, end by having a quick look at what I received, uh, which is always interesting with a mail time... So we've got a Ryman, we've got a Ryman five-part organizer index. Uh, we've also got, interestingly, this is what. Uh, so just give me some rope here, uh, or fast forward to the end. Uh, your your call. But these, what has Ryman chosen as their dividers way back in the day? Diary today notes finance and addresses. Fair enough. Um, there's a thing here called the uh, factor file. I've never, I've never uh, heard of this uh, trade name, but it just, uh, it just. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to blow my nose. Sorry. It just goes to show. Back in the day when the Filofax boom started, there were all these people trying to get on the bandwagon, as you'd expect, thinking, what name? What name? Data file, uh, dicta file, fact Oh, fact file. Right. There we go. Uh, well done, that, that man or woman. fact file Let's call them fact files Something that sounds like Filofax, so we can... We can get a slice of the action, but without uh, contravening any uh, any um, uh, uh, intellectual property, as it were. Um, so we've got uh, we've got this uh, key dates, mum and dad, granny. Okay, so interesting, interesting. Um, but I won't, uh, I won't, uh, I'll try not to, I've got to be careful that there are no um, addresses here. Uh, let me have a look. No, we're all right. And then today we've got some uh, Filofax paper uh, with the copyright 1991. Okay. Um, interestingly, I like to reuse all this paper um, so uh, it won't go to waste. Uh, then we got some more purple paper, quite a lot actually. Then we've got the ubiquitous uh, Filofax um, personal expenses sheet. Uh, I wonder whether this has come out of an. Um, I don't know. These are these these have a copyright date of 1986. They may well be from the the original purchase of this binder and just not used. Uh, because I don't know whether you're aware, but back in the day, uh, when you, um, and this isn't a criticism, I mean, you know, it's just, it is an observation, but, um, and I will demonstrate this, I will demonstrate this uh, at some point soon. 20 years ago, uh, you when you got the pack of, it, uh, they always say, don't they, when you buy a file of facts, a, a selection of papers, which is true. And quite often you get one or two, two or three of each one. Uh, when you bought a file of facts 20 years ago or earlier, you got a substantially bigger stash of paper. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the, the personal expenses stash uh, from that era. 
uh, we've got some QV recycled paper here. Uh, QV, I wonder whether that is Quo Valdis. Um, Quo Valdis paper is actually very, very good, as you'll find out in a future video. Um, but just as a matter of interest, let me just do a little test. I shouldn't really do this test, but uh, okay. I'm just going to... Uh, this is Diamine Pumpkin. Let me spell it right. And this is a Twisby Go. And it's a broad nib. Right, I'm just doing this test because I wonder whether this this paper is Quo Vardis. There we go. Let's have a look. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Uh, this I know this is a mail time, but I just want you to look at that again because feast your eyes on that quality of paper. Made to fit a file fax back in the day. Probably uh, in the 90s, maybe. Uh, this 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 is a this this broad nib uh, with this ink does not uh, it, it's a very 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 good test of paper. Turn it over. Look at that. Absolutely sensational. And I will be talking more about Quo Vardis paper if indeed it is Quo Vardis at, uh, at a future date. But I just thought I'd whet your appetite there uh, about the. Uh, of this paper and I know I've been going on about this but um but hey ho and then we finally got this Ryman uh A to Z organizer in index um so nothing to to write home about here and then finally have we got a card thingy yes and you can you can tell that the plasticizer is you two things you can tell one is the plasticizer is has evaporated to a certain extent so it's all crackly and also the whole thing is filthy dirty um but anyway uh i'll leave it there because that's probably the longest mail time i've ever done um but uh, I just wanted to go a bundle, as we say in the UK, because um, this was a bargain, <laughs> a real bargain. And you can tell by the smile on my face. Um, and I actually bought this for, uh, I believe, about £4. Can you believe it? £4. Uh, if the vendor had presented this with better photos and cleaned it. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, he, he would have uh, maybe sold it for 50, 60, 70 pounds. Uh, but it is one of those bargains. Business is business. I am a Filofax dealer, so I search for things that are dirty or worn or badly presented because, you know... Uh, I mean, I've 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 bought and sold antiques since I was a teenager, and now I'm in my sixties. So 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 that is the way of it, and that includes filofaxes, especially filofaxes like this. Uh, oh, there is a little bit of um, there is a bit of wear there. Let me just let me just uh, see if I can show you here. Yeah, there's a little bit. There's a little bit of marking, Sarah. I don't know whether that's where or whether it's... Uh, let me just have a, a look at the... Uh, hard to tell whether the, 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 the leather is... And this is thin leather, but it's hard wearing. Hard to tell whether that's starting to wear. But the actual corners... I think it's probably just dirt. It's probably just dirt, I think. Because the corners themselves look in very, very good condition. Very good condition indeed. So I, th I think that's just just general general filth, as it were, that I need to clean off and I'm going to wash my hands now. Um, but thank you very much for watching and until my, till my next video, goodbye.